All right, for these three questions, let's go to the iPad. Uh, so first one is 2x squared, y squared, all raised to the fourth times x to the negative four. So I'm only going to use one property at a time to model what I hope you guys are doing, which is just one property at a moment. So first we can use the product to a power property because we have a product here on the inside and it's being raised to a power of four. The product to a power property says that I basically have to apply that power to each of the three terms or however many terms we have on the inside. Uh, the most common mistake here is students will forget to apply it to the two and just write down two, you know, x to the eight, y to the eight, but that's incorrect. You have to apply the power of four to the two as well. And then four times the two would give us eight, four times the another two would give us eight as well. So this simplifies to that times there's still an x to the negative four. And now for the x's, because they're being multiplied, I can use the product rule since the bases are the same and I'm multiplying the terms. So I add the exponents. So this gives us two to the fourth, x to the four, eight minus four is just four, y to the eight. And I think the question wanted uh, the answer to be simplified, so the x was always in the numerator and the y was always in the denominator. So here, the x is already on top, so I don't have to touch it. I have two to the fourth, x to the fourth, and I need the y to be in the denominator. So I use the negative power property, which says anytime a term moves from top to bottom or bottom to top, doesn't matter which direction they're going in, just that the terms are moving, the sign on the power changes. So the y to the 8 becomes y to the negative 8. So you'd get full credit for this if you wanted to rewrite 2 to the 4th as 16x to the 4th over y to the negative 8 on your paper exam, then that would be fine as well. On Donut, it would expect you to write 16 because the, the machine wants you to simplify it all the way to the end. That being said, what I'm really testing is your ability to use properties of exponents not whether you know or memorize that two to the fourth is 16. So on your paper exam, if you give me this, full credit. If you give me that, full credit as well. Both ways work. For the next one, uh, we have a couple of different clever ways of doing this. So one way is to use the product to a power property in the denominator. Um, so basically, you could rewrite this as 2x to the negative 3 over and now we apply the negative one power to both the four and the negative three, which would give us x to the negative four, y to the positive three. And now, because I want, I, I know that I want my x's to be in the numerator in my final answer, I could just move this x to the top by using the negative power property and change the sign on the power. So this would give me two x to the negative three times x to the positive four, because when this x to the negative four goes to the numerator, the sign on the power changes, which makes it a positive four, over y to the third. And now for the two x's on top, because they're being multiplied and the bases are same, I can add the, the exponents. So negative three plus the four would give us two x, or two x to the one, which is really just two x, over y to the third and that would be correct. For this last one, we have, again, a couple of choices where we can start. Uh, I think to simplify the problem would always be a better idea, so y to the zero is one. So I will rewrite this problem as x squared y cubed, two x to the four y squared squared over two x to the six y squared because when this turns to one, one times anything is always itself. So it doesn't really change anything. So that's me not using a property, it's just me saying anything to the power of zero besides zero is one. Now we could apply the quotient rule on this x and this x. We could apply the quotient rule or quotient property on this y and this y, or we could apply the product to a power property here. So we have choices. I'm going to start with the product to a power. Uh, there's no good reason for choosing that. That's just the one that I'm choosing. 
So x squared, y cubed stay the same. And when I apply this power inside, I get 2 squared x to the 8, y to the 4 over the denominator stays the same. Now we can say, OK, we have x's on the top and on the bottom, but I'm only going to use one property. So let's say we use the product property in the numerator to, to group those terms together. So x squared times x to the 8 would give us x to the 10. I have, oh, I forgot the 2 squared. So let's put the 4 out front. So 4 goes there. This 2 squared is going here. And then we have x squared times x to the 8 gives us x to the 10th. Then we have this x to the 3rd and this y, I'm sorry, y to the 3rd and y to the 4th. Multiplying those two gives us y to the 7th by the product property. And the denominator stays as 2x to the 6 y squared. At this stage, we can use the quotient property. So 4 divided by 2 is just 2 x to the 10th divided by x to the 6th is x to the 4th. y to the 7th divided by y to the 2nd is y to the 5th. But since we need the x's on top and y's on the bottom, we can rewrite this to be 2x to the 4th over y to the negative 5th. And uh, I'll make a second set of videos now.